Hi, it's Joe Mazum, Director of Exploration Insights, at uh, the uh, September 2023 edition of the Metals Investment Forum in downtown Vancouver. And with me is Mike DeRose, CEO of uh, Lavras Gold. Mike, how's it going? Very well. <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, thanks for asking me to no, be here. No worries. Uh, well, I mean, it's all uh, very exciting what's happening with Lavras Gold. Can you give us a bit of background on Lavras Gold sure. uh, and how it became Lavras Gold? Yeah, so we were a relatively new company. We were uh, created in April of 2022. We were spun out by a predecessor company called Amarillo Gold that was taken over by Hothschilds Mining. Right. And uh, Hostile Mining uh, took the project over uh, mostly for the, the Posse uh, project. Yeah. It's an open pit gold project. That's correct. Uh, yeah. In central Brazil and Guyana, there's a project called Mira Rosa, which has the Posse pit. About a million ounces of gold uh, was shovel ready and Hothschild's basically investing $200 million to build that open pit mine into a uh, productive capacity. And just so our audience knows, like you've kept a royalty, what is it, on the surrounding area? That's of correct. Yeah, we, we have a 2% revenue-based royalty on all the expiration ground, about 65,000 hectares of expiration ground around the Posse Pit. And it includes a discovery we, we made before we handed over the keys to Hot Shells called Pistino. So that uh, Pistino deposit, uh, we put 40 holes into it, uh, drilled off about a 1.7 kilometer gold bearing structure. Um, I talked to uh, Hothschilds, they're going to include that in their resource statement at year end because they've infill drilled that, is my understanding. Okay. Yeah. But that's not the reason you were able to raise, what is it, $13 million yeah. dollars from an upsized private placement with no warrants yeah. recently. So what would drove that interest in Labras Gold? Yeah, so our real focus, Joe, has been on our southern property called the LDS project in uh, Rio Grande do Sul State. We have been drilling on that property since we went public in April 2022, and we put out a, a very significant uh, hole, a new discovery on our Fazenda de Posto uh, claim block. Uh, it was 340 meters of 1.09 grams per ton gold. Okay, and th this is a huge intrusion, uh, the Lavras de Sol intrusion, and yeah. you're like on the edges of it where it's more alkalic, it seems yeah, to me. That's correct, that's correct. Yeah, so it's an alkaline gold system. As, as you know, some of these alkaline gold systems can be very, very big. Um, this particular target that we drilled was right beside what we call Buchia, which is uh, 500,000 ounces of gold, sort of right at surface and is still open to expansion. Uh, and we drilled across the fall to a sort of a down drop block. It was a blind discovery and just really good interpretation of geology and, and intuition, quite frankly. So, right, and this was no yeah. geophysics. It was just basically using zonation and what you were seeing in the core That's to right. suggest that, hey, maybe we want to be on the other side of this. Exactly. Uh, we noticed a high grade sort of zone of gold on the uh, northwest portion of Butia associated with higher and elevated uh, base metals, particularly um, um, lead. And uh, then we noticed a structure there, a fault, a northeast trending structure, and no holes had ever been drilled in this area across the fault. So we decided we, we better not walk away from it. Let's test it, make sure we're not missing anything. So that's what And we did. by that time you were on fumes in terms of working capital? Yeah, we had about 2.1 million of cash at the end of June of this year. We're, we were spending about, you know, on average about four to $500,000 uh, to $500, a month. So certainly we were looking to, uh, you know, finance and, uh, I call it the $50 million drill hole because we went from a $10 million market cap to about 60 over the last month or so. Yeah, and it wasn't soon, I mean, it wasn't much before you drilled the hole that you were almost trading at your 52 week low. Correct. Uh, and uh, so the hole, tell us about the hole. Well, the hole was uh, a blind discovery. Uh, basically, we spotted it um, across that northeast trending structure, that fault and we drilled um, from south to north and we drilled through about 114 meters of what we call cover rock and then we got into uh, what we call epicyanite which is hosting the gold which is very unique in its coloration you can tell when you're in it and then we drilled for about 340 meters through the zone and then into uh, a perthitic granite at the bottom so yeah, and it generated what was the what was the intersection that got all the attention oh it was again 340 meters of 1.09 grams per ton but within that there's like 160 meters of i think like 1.4 or thereabouts right. like higher grade 1.8 then what you've actually. seen at Buchia on the other side that this is higher grade yeah yeah that's it's higher grade than Butia for sure like some of the intervals we got were up to like 6.9 grams per ton uh, in that particular uh, 6.9 gram interval, we have cross-cutting sulfides, which is uh, telling us there's at least uh, two events, two, two gold mineralizing events on the, on, on the system. 
And this is the sort of thing you want to see for these really healthy sort of gold systems. Right. And so now that you've got the capital, um, and there was lots of interest, obviously, yeah. as we've spoken of, what, what, what's coming up for? Yeah. for so uh, basically, those... we have, we've had two drills on site since, uh, since we went public again in April of 2022. So both drills are now at Butia and at Fazenda de Posto. So what we want to do is focus in that area for the foreseeable future to drill it out, uh, both uh, see what the footprint is in terms of gold uh, endowment. And and uh, yeah, that's where we're going to focus to give this uh, sort of center of gravity to the project. Do you need to do much more work uh, to generate drill targets on the the blind part of of, uh, of the uh, of what you call Facenda de Posto? Yeah. Or or you're just drilling? We're gonna. Well, we know it's there. Yeah. Um, and so really, what we're gonna do is is just try and understand the footprint. So the next hole, next series of holes will include a scissor hole. So basically, going up to the north end and then drilling south. And then we're going to go right into the middle uh, of those the scissor holes and drill right down the guts of it. And then we're going to splay out to the east and to the west. And this will give us a sense as to the geometry of this thing. Oh, and from that other scissor hole, then yeah. we'll go like that. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Okay. And then and then what we'll do is, um, you know, we're but really just trying to... keep it all on that one section for yeah, now. Well, for now, yeah. just to see what we have. Yeah. And then and then we'll, as I said, we'll drill uh, west and then east to understand the, you know, just the limits of this thing and uh, take it from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you're well capitalized now that you've brought in over $13 million yeah. uh, in a yeah. company that previously traded at a market cap of... 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, in ter how long do you think that'll last you, this uh, yeah. 13.7? Well, it should it, over a year anyway, probably a good, uh, good 18 months at least. Uh, depends on how aggressive we get on the, on the drilling and the kind of results that we receive. Um, but uh, we're good for, for a good 18 months anyway. But also infrastructurally, I mean, you're not very challenged uh, yeah. in that part of Brazil. You've got, like uh, you said in your presentation, highways that go right up. So mm -hmm. what's your rough all-in cost, do you think, that for, the, for this program coming up? Because you don't need camps or anything like no, that. No, no. We've got an office in the town of Larvis Sol. It's a town of 7,000 people, uh, kind of a farming community, if you like, cattle, cattle ranching, that sort of thing. And uh, our costs uh, for uh, drilling and assaying is about $248 a meter Canadian. Wow, that yeah. Uh, like yeah. versus the Yukon eight hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Canadian. In fact, our our discovery costs on a per ounce basis for the million ounces that we have in the forty three one hundred one category is about U S eleven dollars an ounce, and that compares to about thirty dollars an ounce for the industry. So our discovery costs actually are quite low. And again, it relates to what you're alluding to, which is great infrastructure, but also just the nature of the uh, the, the mineral target that we're drilling off. Right. Okay. Well, congratulations, Mike, and well, thank to your you. team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very interesting intersection and a, a bit of light in a very dark uh, industry right now after, after the Precious Metal Summit. Uh, one of the few that have been able to raise money, Lavras Gold. Uh, and that's it for me, Joe Mazum, our Exploration Insights, uh, attending the September 2023 edition of the Metals Investment Forum in downtown Vancouver. Thank you very much uh, for watching.